What's up, Foundation? Your big partner back again, man. Big partner back again. You know, I, I wasn't gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna chill for the night. You know what I'm saying? And I was just gonna kick back, cause you know, last night was the celebration for the 10K. You know what I'm saying? But I be god dang it ain't even been a whole day, and I look up. I didn't even know somebody called me and told me to look. I look up, I go to my page, and it's 11, it's past 11K now. I'm like, well, well God dang, you know, somebody like me. So, you know, I felt I had to do my thug thizzle, my due diligence, you know what I'm saying, for my foundation, you know what I'm saying, the nation. And come on in with a story. So, you know, this one, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a, it's going to get a little personal. I'm going to let y'all into a little insight of, you know what I'm saying, my life, my childhood. Um, you could tell by the, by, the, by, the, by the title, you know what I'm saying, what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Mom's got sick of my BS. Um, a lot of y'all already know the story about how when she sent me away to stay with my pops, when she found out, you know what I'm saying, I was gang banging and um, she felt she couldn't do nothing with me. Okay, this one here is a little bit, a little bit different. Ah, uh, mom's put me out. She put me out a couple of times, but the last time mom's put me out, I was fourteen. I was fourteen, getting ready to turn fifteen, or I was just in the middle of fourteen or something like that. Cause I know I end up going to YA and start doing time, but um, mom's put me out on this one. I'm gonna take you to the. I'm gonna take you. So I'm gonna take you to the beginning, man. And um, cause now, but I'm gonna tell you though, when she put me out this last time, you know, I never, I never did live with her no more. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I've been, pa I've been through there kicking with her. You know what I'm saying? Kicking with my sisters and stuff like that. But as far as living with her, I didn't live with moms no more after, after she put me out the last time. Um, it was always, you know, what I'm saying, living with different women by the end, or, or you know, when I was younger, staying with different homies and so you know, just coming up in that life, man, as a gang banger. But anyway, I'm going um, to kick this one off. Um, the first time moms had put me out was about, th I was 13. And she went, after she found out I was gang banging, you know what I'm saying, she ended up sending me to stay with pops and all of that old crazy stuff, you know. Still didn't none, didn't none stop me. Um, I, was on a, I was on a crash course to self-destruction with this gang thing, and she knew it. She couldn't stop it. She didn't understand it. She didn't know what to do about it, you know. So, uh, I end up doing some stuff in the streets. I ain't going to speak on what I did, but I end up doing some stuff in the streets that end up getting, getting the house shot up. And, um, you know, she was a wreck. My sister was real young and, um, she didn't really, you know, she didn't really understand it herself. And, um, moms knew she didn't know why it had happened. She didn't know who did it, but she knew after a while, you know, it was something that I was doing in them streets that brought this, you know what I'm saying, to her house. And she, you know, get out, you know, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Okay, cool, I got ghosts. You know what I'm saying? I ended up staying, I stayed, you know, I stayed with my homeboys, you know, a couple of weeks, and you know, almost a few months. And um, I end up easing back in with her, easing back in with her. And uh, like I say, then, you know, like I say, here come the, you know, the, the situation with, you know, she, her sending me to stay with my pops, not working out, her sending me out of town to different places, not working out. I wasn't having it. I'm coming home. I ain't got to come to you, but I'm coming home. I'm not finna stay away from South Park. I'm not finna stay off 51st and Avalon. I'm just not, I wasn't going to do it. You know, my little young mind was inundated with that gang thing to the point to where it's all I knew. It was my family to me, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, at a young age, um, me and mom's relationship had started kind of getting a little rocky and it started, you know, going, you know, going, going south of the border real quick. And I didn't understand it. But now for those out there, <clears throat> for those, for those young men or some of you older men that's out there that kind of went through a lot of ups and downs with your moms when you was a young age and you didn't understand where it was coming from, what the problem was. Um, a lot of it stemmed from her 
hatred or her disdain or dislike toward your father. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of black women, man, who got done so bad by their baby daddies that they took it out on the sons. They took it out on the kids because you might have looked like him. Uh, you might you might have talked like him, walked like him, act like him. You did something that reminded her of your father. And she couldn't, and you know, psychologically, she couldn't deal with that. And she ended up, you know what I'm saying, taking her, her anger toward him out on you. And that's what I was a victim of at a young age. I was a victim. I didn't understand it. I didn't realize what it was until years and years later as I got older and got a little bit more swifter up top. And I peeped, you know, from, you know, talking to different people about certain situations. I'm like, okay, oh, so this was going on. All right. Okay. Well, cool. But, um, as time went on, man, I'm, I'm in these streets, man. Um, I'm game banging. I'm doing my thing. Um, you know, at that time, you know, the, the gun, the gun of choice was a gauge, a little 12 gauge. Some of the homies had four tens. Um, you know, some of the homies had little twenty twos. Uh, if you had a 38, you was like a big man in the hood. You know, you had you some, if you had your 38. Mom's had a 38 and I stole that gun from her before. That's a different story. But anyway, um, I'm out here. I'm doing my thing, homie. I'm gang banging. I'm tripping. And um, just out here wilding, wilding. You know what I'm saying? Somehow, some way, um, the our enemies at that time, uh, the villains, they found out where I lived. And I had been I had been cutting up to the point to where they was like, oh, okay, look, we know where Khartoum live. Okay, so boom. I had I had been doing my thing. I had been over there shooting at dudes' grandmothers' houses, uh, shooting at dudes' houses, and just doing all type of stuff myself. And it was like a you know all points bulletin. Man, find out where that dude live, and you know that come from messing with women or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Dudes just in the walk of life somehow, some way, your information just gets out. They found out where I live, and they did they did what they supposed to do. They came through one night. I never forget it. Uh, I'm not gonna say what street I was living on at the time, but um, I had came home. I had, we we had been in South Park all night kicking it. You know what I'm saying with the homies, and um, it was uh, it was me, uh, my homeboy Warlock, my homeboy Big Nose, my homeboy Crippin Casper. It was me, Warlock, Big Nose, Crippin Casper. Insane and too cool. I remember we was all in the park because I remember um the homie Casper was uh arguing with the homie too cool about who who was gonna put in for a quart. You know, back then we didn't have a whole lot of money, you know, and they didn't have them 40 ounces. We used to drink them quarts, the quarts of old English 800. We'd go, you know, put our because you got some money, man. What you got? What you got? What you got on the drink? What you got on it? You know what I'm saying? This homie might have 50 cent. He might got 35 cent. He might got a quarter. Every now and then, one of the homies come up with a whole dollar. You know what I'm saying? We we, we young kids, you know, trying to do our thug fizzle and be out there in them streets, you know? And we would always piece up every day. We would piece up on that court every day. Man, we passed that court around, man, that old English 800. That was my drink of choice. Now, I ain't never really been into hard liquor and none of that. But that old English 800, man, you know, that was my drink. And I will admit, I still drink it today every now and then when I want to celebrate a little something, something, something. You know, I still drink it. It don't take me two tall cans and I'm faded 15 sheets to the wind. I'm gone, y'all. But anyway, we had, um, we, had been, we had been in the park. We got a little tipsy, a little drunk. And, uh, you know, homie start going home. You know, this homie might leave. I'm gone, cuz. Man, I'm finna go home, cuz. I'm hungry. All right. Boom, boom. Me too. I'm finna go. So, you know, it got to the point. Everybody agreed we finna go home. And um, I went home. I went home. I went home. I went home. But I was followed walking down the streets. Or I thought I was followed. Because it was a car... This same car had passed by. And you know, you got you got them instincts. You got your head on a swivel. You know what I'm saying? Coming up back then in this gang life. You know what I'm saying? Homies, remember when you walking down the street and a car might start coming down the street back of you. And it's a, it, them big old, we got them big old trees. 
as the, as the car come, especially if the car coming towards you, car coming towards you, you'll get to the tree. And as the car coming, you going around the tree at the same time the car coming, making sure they ain't gonna got no straight shot on you. And boom, once the, once the car go past you, you will come around the tree and you will look. You know what I'm saying? You look and see if them brake lights come on. Now, if them brake lights come on, out of there, gone. You got to catch me when you can. Or if you got if you got you something to pop with, you coming out with that with that heat on them. If the car coming from in back of you, you gonna get to that tree and you gonna stop and you gonna turn around. You gonna look at that car and wait till it pass by and get on about its business. You feel what I'm saying? Then you know you had that other thing. Whereas um, you know back in the day, you know we used to walk a lot in L.A. In them late seventies, early eighties, it was all about walking. Man, you would walk from 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 Slauson to Imperial. I mean, you walk from Vernon all the way to Imperial. Just belly, man. You know, that, that thing, that belly through the hood. You know what I'm saying? Just belly, just walking with the big old ghetto blaster radios. Just doing your thing. You know, gang banging. We was young kids. You know what I'm saying? It was what it was. So, um, boom. Anyway, so yeah. Here it is. I'd seen the car. It was a green car a couple of times, but I didn't, you know, I didn't think none of it. I'd watched it. I'd watched it. I'd watched it. So when I got home, when I went up, when I went on the porch and, and went on in the house, the same car, it kind of pulled up. It stopped. Ain't no kind of pulled up. It pulled up and stopped. And then, and when I looked at the car, it just, you know, took off, kept going. I'm like, man, what the heck? All right, cool. Thinking nothing of it, you know, 14, 15, you know, 13. I mean, about 14, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't that advanced at the time in my um in my hood survival tactics. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really put a whole lot into it. I knew how to survive, but I didn't know I wasn't that skilled in my tactics. So I didn't peep I didn't peep what was going on. So time going on, I I never forget. My sister, she was asleep. It was late at night. It was she was asleep. And um when I came in, mom's she was asleep too. But I woke her up. I used to always come in and, you know, tell, kiss, you know, kiss my mama, tell her I love her. I used to want to let her know that I had made it in because I know she worried. Man, my mama worried a whole lot about me in them streets, man. And um, I know right to this day, if it wasn't for her prayers and my auntie prayers and other people's prayers, I wouldn't have made it this long. I wouldn't have been here. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm here today because of the way they prayed for me. And uh, a lot of times I would come in. I know she was woke. She wasn't going to go to sleep until I made it in. And once I made it in, she would go ahead and play sleep. And cause I'd come and I'd look in her room all the time, like, hey mama, she be, you know, she in there, she sleep. I'm like, okay, but she sleep. But no, I found out later on, moms was woke a whole lot. You know, just sitting there worried, worried to death about if I'm gonna make it home in these streets tonight. And and it, it, it was it was bad on her, man. It, it, it was bad on moms, man. You know, I'm I'm her only son. I didn't have no no biological brothers. My brother was crazy, Ray. But as far as a biological brother, I didn't have one. I was her only son, and she didn't want to lose me. And I really didn't realize back then at that time the stress that I was putting her through. You know what I'm saying? If I knew, if I knew, if I knew then what I knew today, it wouldn't have been like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, I, you know, I wouldn't have worried her that bad. But I just didn't know, man. I was a product, of, like I say, my book, the name of my book, a product of my environment. And I was a product of my environment, man. So anyway. Came in, you know, did what I did, you know, look, checked on her and all that. And I never forget, I was in the kitchen. I was in the kitchen and I called myself going to make me an egg sandwich. I used to like to get that, that Wonder Bread and scramble, and scramble them eggs, scramble me three eggs up, boom, and put that little light, that little light coat of strawberry jelly on both sides of the bread and go from there. Take it down through there, man, you know, with that strawberry quick, that strawberry quick uh in the in the milk. And that strawberry quick, you know what I'm saying? With the rabbit, boom. I had to have it. That was my thing. And um, the house was, at this time, was upstairs, downstairs. And I'm in there. I'm downstairs. And um, all I remember, man, I, I mean, I remember it. Boom, 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 boom. Now, a lot of times when your house gets shot up, so a lot off the rip, you don't know it's your house being hit. You hear the, you, all you hear is the boom, 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 boom. And you don't know it's your house until one of the windows, tsh, tsh, that's when you start hearing that. 
them shells hitting the wood, you know what I'm saying, outside the house. But you hear that window, when it's knocking that window out. You hit the dirt, oh, shoot. Then the, oh, then the very next thing you're going to hear is that, when the car peeling out. A lot of times dudes, uh, you know, sometimes dudes go holler out they set, sometimes they won't. You know, they just going to bust, boom, 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 boom. But they hit the house about 12 times. What, what it was shot with, I couldn't tell you. But um, after they after the house got hit, my mom was upstairs. She was hollering. Ah, oh, and she called me. She called my name. She called my name. She called my name. Hey, baby, baby. Where are you, all right? you all right? I'm like, and I jump up and I run up the stairs. I run up the stairs to my mama. And, and she crying. She crying. She done ran in my sister's room. And she got my sister holding her tight. And so she hold my sister tight, and um, I run in there, and I'm like, man, you are, you are, you are, and she said, yeah, yeah, what was that, what was that, they shot the house up, they shot the house up again, huh, they shot the house up again, I'm like, yeah, mama, yeah, and she just start crying, man, she start crying, and I, and I noticed, I seen that look in her face, man, she know it was some dudes that was after me, and I seen that look, man, and I, you know, she just started shaking her head, shaking and crying. She was crying and nodding. She was rocking with my sister, and she was just crying, shaking her head. And she was like, I can't do it. I can't take it no more. I can't take it. I can't take it no more. I can't take it. You got to go. You got to go. You going to get us hurt. You got to go. And I'm like, Mama, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She said, you just got to go. Get your stuff. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. I'm like, okay, Mom. Okay. I'll get out. I leave, I leave, you know what I'm saying, I leave, I told her I leave, you know, um, I ain't gonna lie, at that time I started crying, but it wasn't because I was scared or anything, I was crying because I loved my mama, and she was crying, and I knew I had hurt her, and I knew, I wasn't even tripping on the fact that I all, I could have got her killed, I wasn't even tripping on that. Um, I was just tripping on the fact that she was crying, you know, to see my mama cry, you know, I, it, it would, you know, it made me cry too. And she was, I'm talking about them hard, <laughs> she was crying hard, man. And it, it touched me. I was like, dang, man, my mama, man, you know, I don't want to see my mama sad like this, but, um, you know, I grabbed a few things. I grabbed, uh, a old knapsack bag, like, like a crocus sack knapsack bag, if I can remember right. And, um, uh, I couldn't go to none of my auntie's house at that time um, because they were scared of me. None of my aunties wanted me over their house. None of them. None of them didn't want me around. Oh, um, no. Mm -mm, no, don't send him over here. He bad because I'd go over their house. Uh, I'd take spray paint, markers, anything, lipstick. I, I, I'm hitting the setup all around their house. I'm just doing all type of stuff. You know, I wasn't stealing or nothing like that, but I was just banged out, man. You know what I'm saying? I was super banged out. And um, they didn't want me to bring them type problems to their house. Not at all. No sir Bob was where they going to have it. And um, luckily, man, my homeboy Casper, his uh, his grandmama, his grandmama let me stay. You know what I'm saying? She let me stay at, uh, she let me stay at her house for a couple of days. She let me stay at her house a couple of days. And from there, I just kind of bounced around. I did. I was able to go to my, one of my auntie's house for a little while. And from there, different places, different places, until I finally end up going to jail. I finally end up, you know, catching a case and going to juvenile hall. And um, it was so messed up for me, man. Things were so messed up. I thought when I went to juvenile hall, I'm I, in my mind, in my young mind, I'm thinking, you know, you know what, this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, you know, moms ain't got to worry about no more. I ain't got, she ain't, I ain't got to worry about nobody shooting up our house. I ain't got to worry about, you know, you know, nobody hurting them. She ain't, and I, I ain't got to worry about her worrying about me. You know, uh, this is where I'm at. She know I'm in jail somewhere. And, and and that was my mentality, man. That was my, my mentality, homie. And that was way back then. And, um, and turn around. I heard it. Her, I heard, I heard my mom again, um, way up into the, up into the mid late nineties before I caught my jury store case. um, uh, I, when I told you, I told y'all about that in one of my other stories, when a girl called me and told me that she heard her home voice talking about, uh, coming to shoot my mom's house up. They knew, they found out where she lived. And, um, the day before I left and, and, and went out of state and caught my case, I shot to the house real quick and got her 
and she was hurt. She was mad. She like, you back with this again? All these years, you still doing the same thing? You promised me because I had made her a promise before I got out the last time that I wasn't going to come out with that gang stuff. I wasn't going to do nothing. And I kept it from her because, you know, at the time, you know, I'm having money at this time. I got my own house out here in Carson and all this old stuff. Nobody knew where I laid my head in Carson. But lo and behold, they found out where my mama lived again. And they was going to come through and try to do their due diligence. Uh, so, I, you know, I dreaded having to go to her and tell her, you know, about it. Look, but I, you know, I'd rather for her to be alive and mad at me than ignorant to the situation and dead. Nah. And I mean, I'll never forget that day I came, that morning I came in the house. I'm like, mama, I know you're going to be mad at me, but I need for you to pack your stuff and let's go. And she like, boy, what you tripping on? I like, mama, get your stuff. You know, this part of the story right here, you heard in one of my other stories. And I'm like, mama, get your stuff. Let's go. And she was like, oh, Lord, it's this gang stuff again. What? What? Mama, get your stuff. I'm peeking out the windows. I'm looking. I got that thing in my hand, you know, and I'm looking. I'm like, mama, hurry up, hurry up. You know, I took her out the house at that time and moved her to a hotel. And, uh, you know, the next day went on, went on Alabama and caught that jury store case. My, my sister ended up getting her out and moving her in to ho stay with her. And um, at the time, they had a house out there in Carson, nice house, you know what I'm saying? My sister ended up moving out there, running behind me, wanting to keep up with me. But, um, you know, moms was moms was hurt many, many years behind that, you know? She was hurt many years behind that. So, um, okay, somebody was trying to send me a text. But, uh, you, you know, I, I put her through a whole lot, man. You know, mom, she ran, you know, I really, I really hurt her a lot when... I didn't go play professional football when I did. Well, when I didn't go to college and then go on to play professional football because I could have made it, man. I, I'm I had scholarships coming from every which way. And, um, you know, when I chose that gang life, it, it, it kind of broke her heart, man. You know, she, she had ended up having to give up on me many, many moons ago and she just washed her hands and just gave it to God, which was a good thing. Cause you know, she couldn't do nothing with me. God had to do it. So, you know, that was, that was, that's a quick story. I just had to get into y'all. And they kind of let you know how my younger childhood life was going. But anyway, man, for those that's out there, and, um, oh, okay. Man, come on, come on, come on, Keisha. I'm trying to talk. Anyway, okay. That was somebody trying to text again. But for those that's out there, man, and you, you have, if you haven't, if you ended that life and you haven't ruined the relationship with your folks, man, don't ruin that relationship. Because once it go bad, it's hard to get it back, man. It's hard to get it back. It's hard to get it back. You know, I, I you know, my mama, my mama went to her grave believing that I put Avalon ahead of her. You know, she really, truly believed that. But she loved the ground I walk on. You know what I'm saying? I was her only son. She loved me. But she really believed that. Oh, man. But anyway... Anyway, I got to get up out of here, man. Um, Y'all rock with me, Foundation. Rock with me, man. You know what I'm saying? And the words I always say, A gang of don't bang, man. It's Avalon. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Avalon, homie. But at the end of the day, I've always loved my mama way more. And I hope we all doing the same, homie. I'm out of here.